Buying insects online is about 30% science, 30% art, and 95% luck. This has been a difficult project. It first started two years ago, never got off the ground. I couldn't afford the bugs. It looked like it wasn't gonna get off the ground six months ago either. And then about two weeks after I put this back on the back burner, I was contacted by one of my Patreon supporters, Mr. Jan Nelson. Mr. Nelson wanted to sponsor the project and he wanted to do it because he thought what we were doing was valuable and also because he wanted to give back to you, the photographic community, which is what he has done. So thank you from me and the channel, uh, but also thank you from the larger photographic community. I think this is an important project and I'm glad that uh, we got to do it. When it started, my goal was to tell you everything I could find out about the market and about the, the big players in the market and hopefully give you a list of the good vendors and the bad vendors so you could make a wise decision. But what I've learned over the course of six months of doing this is that this is a big, complicated industry. It just does not lend itself to that kind of an assessment, quite frankly. So this video may go a little bit long. I'm gonna break it up into chapters. We're gonna talk about five areas of buying bugs. Uh, I'm going to tell you everything that went wrong with me and how you could avoid it yourself with just a little bit of planning. At the end of the video, I am going to give you a list of the vendors that I will probably use again at some point. I am not going to give you a list of those vendors that I will not use again. And there's a good reason for this. Let me explain. When I had a good experience with a vendor, I was perfectly comfortable believing that my next experience with that vendor would also be good. Uh, that's kind of the way these things usually work. But when I had a bad experience, and I had a few of those, it seemed a little unfair to just assume that all future experiences would be bad too. Uh, and it's the, that principle of, of charity that makes it a, a little difficult for me to judge people on the basis of one bad experience. You, you have no way of knowing what was going on the day you placed your order and uh, a bad experience or a rude person could well have been nothing of significance or importance. Now, does that mean I'm going to use vendors where I had a bad experience? No, it doesn't. I, I mean, I probably won't. But that's different from giving you a list of, of people to avoid. Uh, I don't think it would be doing you any favors. I could, I could be failing to mention one of the best vendors. I don't know. If I had used them 10 times each and had a track record, then yeah, I could give you a list of the bad vendors. But I don't. I mean, I have one experience with most of these folks. And uh, one experience is not enough for me to put somebody on a list uh, that you should avoid. There are a couple of big issues that need to be discussed. Uh, one of them is the environment and the plight of insects on our planet right now. There's some sobering information that I learned about that. The second thing I want to talk about is the possible human impact of buying insects on the market. I don't have answers for either of these questions, I'm afraid, but when you're making a decision whether or not to buy an insect or who to buy an insect from, it's probably good if you know these things so that you can make a, a good informed decision and be okay in your own skin. So we'll talk about that as we go through. So I boiled this down to five points, five things that I think if you paid attention to these five things, you can have almost certainly a good experience in your insect buying. And if you ignore these five, you'll almost certainly have a bad one. It turns out the business is very complicated. There are a lot of moving parts, a lot of people involved, and a lot of bug vendors. It's a massive business, 350 plus million dollars a year. Most of the insects are sold for feed and sold to industry as raw materials for various things. But a lot of them are sold to collectors, to entomologists, to universities, to photographers, jewelry makers. Project was laid out pretty simply. I would place an order, 
keep track of the date I ordered it, received it, the condition uh, of the bugs, the, uh, the condition of the bugs when I photographed them, all of these things were gonna get points. And then at the end, I'd have numbers and I'd give you the list. That just isn't gonna work. This business is too big and too complicated and too convoluted for that to really be very helpful at all. Instead, what I'm gonna do is give you the five lessons that I had to learn to get to the point where I feel like I can go out into the market and buy insects without fear of losing my bank account or uh, my temper. This is a tricky business to find your way around and there are a lot of mistakes that you can make. And I think I made all of them, uh, but I did keep track of all of my mistakes and I have built these five lessons on the things that I wish I'd known when I first started this. Let me tell you very briefly how the study was conducted. I selected 20 vendors that are all major vendors. They're all leaders in the market from all over the world. And I placed an order with each of them. Now, initially my idea was I was gonna place the same order. Uh, and this was one of the things I had to learn was that you know, different vendors in different markets are gonna have different species. And there's a lot of gaps. So the list that I first made out for the first company, which was the Butterfly Company here in America, the second vendor, which was also an American company, didn't have any of those insects, not one of them. I ordered uh, an order from each of them. I kept track of the date I ordered it, the day it arrived. When they arrived, I set aside a couple of hours and I went through the order, depending on how many bugs there were in it. I examined the, the packaging, the, uh, the individual insects in their individual packaging, the condition of the insect. I made notes of everything that I found. If there was damage or problems of any kind, I kept track of it and that would be assessed as part of their score. I uh, evaluated them on their website, the ease of use, uh, the ease of browsing, as opposed to going to buy a specific insect, because that turns out to be a huge deal. Uh, and it's uh, significantly impacted where some people ended up on my list. Some of these sites are uh, impenetrably difficult to use. Uh, and others are make it browsing impossible. Unless you know exactly the insect you want and where it comes from, you're not gonna find it. I gave a score for customer service or the interaction with me whenever that was appropriate. There were some I didn't talk to, but most I did. And uh, you know, you got points for being helpful and you got points for knowing the business. There were points available for anybody who had to deal with a customer service um, a situation. And there were a few of them and uh, some of them did not handle it well. Some, <laughs> one in particular. Do I have time to tell you a short story? I've got some pictures to go with it. I ordered a bee. It turned out to be my favorite insect of all time. It's my most photographed insect of all time. It's an orchid bee uh, from South America. And I ordered it from an American company. But when I got it, it wouldn't come out of the bottle. It was the one of the few wet specimens I ordered. It was like one of those ships they put in a bottle, only it was a bee. I could see them putting the bee in the bottle and then pulling the little strings to get its wings and its legs out. It wouldn't come out of the bottle. But when I um, uh, contacted the seller to say, you know, this is a lovely bee, but I can't get it out of the bottle and I can't photograph it in the bottle. They said, just pull harder. And I said, I am, not pull I am not pulling any harder than I already have on any of the appendages or the wings or anything. No, it's jammed in the bottle, it won't come out. No, you just have to pull harder. And that was it, end of story. The, the woman told me if I knew what I was doing, I'd be able to get it out of there. So it was a little bit insulting, but I ended up cutting the bottom off the bottle with a Dremel. Then I got it out and it turned out to be my favorite bee ever. In fact, I would be willing to bet I have photographed this single insect more than any other insect I've ever encountered. And it's still in good shape. So maybe being in a tight bottle is, is, is a good thing. What else did I measure? Price, uh, shipping, hidden costs, packaging, the accuracy of the order, the overall inventory and selection that they, they offered. 
As a proxy for uh, ethical behavior, I took a sampling of the endangered species lists of the US and the international uh, oversight bodies, and I searched the inventories of each of the vendors for any evidence of any of these endangered uh, species. It was a sampling and it was a huge job, but I didn't find any evidence that any of the vendors in this study were involved in the sale of any of the sampled endangered species. So let's get into the lessons, five of them. Lesson number one, know the market. Well, that's what we're talking about now. Understand that you're dealing in one tiny little corner of a big, busy market that's mostly geared towards industry and agriculture. We are a minor player in this, but understanding the bigger, uh, the bigger game will help you understand uh, how the insects are getting to you and why they cost what they cost and why they're sometimes in the condition they're in. What is less clear to those of us on this end of the process is that there are people at the other end of the process who are going out and harvesting these insects in some pretty dire conditions. And uh, the insect business is uh, a way for them to survive in many cases. It's how they feed their families. So it's hardly surprising that there can be some conflicts of interest uh, in the business. It creates a uh, something of a dilemma uh, to have uh, insects that are uh, potentially uh, in danger being massively harvested by people who are trying to feed their families. It does create some quandaries as to how to proceed. It, it may seem on the surface that the best way to deal with that would be to not buy insects. If you're not buying insects, they won't be sold and they won't be taken from their habitat. But then you have to wonder about the people that are surviving off the business of, of harvesting these insects and selling them into the trade. It's not an easy uh, question to answer, but I think it's a question we, we need to examine for ourselves. I've examined this from every angle. I don't have an answer for you, but I have an answer for me. And that is, I am uh, satisfied that I'm on uh, solid ethical ground in, in ordering the insects that I do. I believe that my photography is a net benefit uh, and that uh, raising awareness to the beauty and majesty of these uh, insects can only help the plight of the insects. And I think that uh, there is a net benefit to the environment and a net benefit to the people that are involved. So I don't have any ethical misgivings about ordering bugs in the future, but you may. And when I say know the business, that's why, is so that you don't find yourself doing something that is inconsistent with your personal beliefs. It's worth spending some time to do that. Lesson number two, know your vendor. This is not difficult and it is expected. If you're dealing with European and Asian dealers, they want to talk to you. They want to know what's going on with you and why you want to buy their insects because they want to make sure you have a good experience. Collectors buy different insects for different reasons. So do jewelry makers and so do entomologists. We buy them to take photographs of them and uh, we have a specific set of needs. And if our vendor doesn't know what those needs are, there's a good chance we won't get them met. And the best way to do it is to make friends with your vendor. I have made several uh, good friends. In fact, one of them is gonna be <laughs> interviewed on, on the channel uh, in the new year. Uh, he's an entomologist uh, in Paris who has a business and uh, he talked to me for an hour on the phone the first time <laughs> to learn what it was I wanted and to show me the individual insects that I was buying as I ordered them. He would pull them out of the drawers and select the right sizes and, uh, and everything. A word about size. This, is, this comes later, but I, I'll forget about it if I don't say it now. Everybody in the world thinks that when you order an insect, you want the biggest one of that kind that they have. So you have to tell them sometimes, no, no, I don't want the biggest. I want the best or the most colorful or the whatever it is you want for your photograph. It's seldom is it the biggest. I ordered a weevil until I figured this out. The pictures all look the same size. 
the frames are all normalized and they crop or, or, or blow up the images. So the insect looks the same size. And if you don't read the description, you'll do what I did and you'll buy a weevil thinking that's the coolest red weevil I've ever seen, only to find out it's bigger than my hand and I don't have a lens that will fit that in. So be careful. But if you get to know your vendor and you become friendly with them, they will package your, uh, your goods up like they're sending a birthday present to a friend. They'll make sure you get the best of the best. And uh, you, you just cannot go wrong. A couple of the people that I've uh, made contact with will get something interesting in today and they'll contact me. So make friends with your vendor, tell them what you want because they want you to get what you want. That's how they'll get you back. I would go so far as to say that if you take the time to call up your vendor and explain what you want and get to know their business, that will take care of 90% of the mistakes that you would otherwise make because you'll have somebody helping you not make the mistakes. These guys are pros. So do that, get to know them, get to like them. Lesson number three, and this one's important, know what you are buying. Understand the grading system of the vendor that you're using. They all use different ones, and uh, some of them are really confusing. They all use A for the best, like A1, A+, A2, A star. Uh, find out what they're using. It is very easy to be in a rush and order a bug that sounds like it's their top quality, only to find out, no, that's their third quality. That means it has no legs and its abdomen's been pinched off. No, you, you definitely need to find out what their top grade is and order the top grade. The grading system generally allows a bug to have an antenna missing or a, an appendage missing and still be considered uh, a, a second uh, level bug, an A2 or whatever. And you don't want that. You, if, you, if you're buying a bug and you're spending decent money on it, you don't want anything that isn't perfect. I, I know I've already talked about this, but make sure you don't buy endangered species. It's really our responsibility to make sure we don't do that. Make sure you understand the size I already talked about. Make sure you understand the price. There are a couple of vendors on eBay that I did uh, look at. And eBay has a bad habit of letting vendors advertise bags of insects or, or collections of insects, $5. And when you go to the, to the actual page and you start digging, you find out, well, no, it's $5 for an insect. If you want the package of insects that five is 25 and the, the prices just go up in increments of five per insect, that's what they're actually selling. And there's a lot of that on eBay. Make sure you know what you're getting. You might think you're buying a packet of a dozen insects, but you're probably getting an insect. There are very few bargains, uh, very few specials in the insect business, as far as I could tell. Every now and again, there'll be some, but I have a feeling that they're really not marked down. They're just insects that they're trying to get rid of. Uh, but every now and again, you'll come across something that is a, a killer deal. I'll give you a word of warning about browsing. Some of the websites are absolutely fantastic. They have lovely pictures. They have pictures for every insect and you just want all of them. And if you've just watched a video on insect photography, you'll probably end up buying all of them. And uh, the orders add up very, very quickly. So uh, it's like my, uh, my mum used to say, uh, don't, don't go to the grocery shop when you're hungry. Well, it's the same with bugs. Don't go browsing one of these websites when you're really in the mood to photograph a bug because you'll buy them all. I found that I did best when I made a list. I would browse one day for sure, but then I'd make a list and then think about it and then go back and just order the ones I wanted. It, uh, it helped and uh, I know Jan appreciated it. <laughs> now you probably think that uh, with somebody else paying for these insects, I could probably get pretty profligate with my insect purchase, but I was, really stingy. The fact of the matter is some of the most gorgeous and beautiful insects that I got in the whole thing were very inexpensive. 
There's something I forgot to mention about the vendors, so I'm going to mention it now. It's a good idea to know who your vendor's customers are, who they cater to. Some vendors, like uh, there's one in Germany that I'll be telling you about at the end, that is for really serious collectors. Their website is terrible unless you're a collector and you know exactly what you want and exactly where it comes from and all that. You can then find what you're looking for. Some of these businesses only sell rare insects to collectors. Now, they would, they would sell the same rare insect to you and me, but you can get an equally gorgeous insect for a fraction of the price. There is a butterfly called Morpho cypress, which is a blue butterfly, and it's gorgeous, true. And uh, you can spend as little as $40. Most of the time, it's $60 to $80. But if you can get your hands on a golden variant Morpho, $1,200, $1,690. And the most expensive was $2,500 for a dead insect. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I was so intrigued by that. I listed that as an additional uh, judging category. Every vendor that I ordered from, I also check the price on a Morpho a Cypress if they had one. And uh, most of them did, and some of them were reasonable, most of them were not. It seemed to me that the super expensive places were the ones that were also charging over $1,000 for a Morpho. I wish I could get $1,000 for a dead insect because I've got a room full of them over there. By the way, if you do decide to buy something expensive, have them show you that insect, not the species. Have them show you the one they're sending you from all angles. I would not buy any of these expensive insects without seeing them. Heck, if it was $10, I'd want to see it. Lesson number four, know what's going on with your money. There are few problems that you're going to encounter ordering insects uh, domestically. But as soon as you start going international, you need to be aware of the, the various ways that money can slip away. Uh, there are some vendors that are going to charge uh, export taxes or uh, export duties or this fee or that fee. Uh, whereas uh, when you're buying domestically, none of that uh, is usually an issue. Be careful with currency. When you're on the, the website, most of them will allow you to shop in your, in your native uh, currency. So uh, for us over here, you, you can almost always find the site can give you prices in dollars. Uh, do that. Uh, but I, I uh, made a, a big mess of a, an order in Canada. Uh, I ordered it, ordered what I wanted, and then when I saw the final price, it was above my threshold. I didn't want to go any higher than that, so I cancelled the order. And about two weeks later, I found out that was Canadian dollars they were doing it in, which the Canadians don't know how much a dollar is worth because they only get 75 cents for it. Ask them what the, the final cost is and... I, I hate to say this because a couple of these people are on my list, uh, quite high on my list, but uh, I was uh, frustrated with the, the purchasing process in a couple of the French um, uh, and German uh, organizations because they, would, they treat the shipping as, as a completely separate issue and uh, bill for it separately. So you'd, you'd get the bill and the total and you'd pay it and then you get a bill for the shipping. Uh, so yeah, know that ahead of time and, and it'll, it'll keep you from getting too frustrated. Let me say a word about refunds and returning insects. It's probably never worthwhile to return an insect. If an insect is damaged, it's going to cost you so much to put it in a box and send it back. Uh, it is, however, in my opinion, worth uh, letting the vendor know that you are unhappy, uh, especially if it's a vendor that you have got to know, you'll feel more comfortable doing it. You can let them know. I bought a, a pair of um, uh, giraffe weevils, gorgeous, but both of them uh, were decapitated by the time I got them. I'm not gonna send them back. It would cost me more to send them back than they cost. At, at the end of the day, buying internationally is a risk that you have to take. Because if you get a bug and it's broken, you're not gonna send it back. It's gonna cost you 20 bucks. 
to send it a $5 insect back. You just kind of have to eat it. I mean, not don't literally eat it. Well, you could, I suppose, but I wouldn't. Domestically, I suppose you could, but it's still going to cost you a lot of money. Now, the exception to that is if you buy a, a Morpho Cypress, there, there are two things you need to do. Number one is you need to get it insured before it's mailed to you. And two, you need to get your head examined and then lend me your Morpho Cypress so I can photograph it. I was talking earlier about deals. One of the best deals is if you can find a vendor that's selling butterfly wings, butterfly and moth wings. When they're pinning them or putting them in a box sometimes, they'll break a wing off and they don't want to throw it away. So they put it in a, in a box and then they'll sell a, a packet of 20 wings. There's a good chance you'll end up with a moth or a butterfly that has breathtaking scales on its wings and that they're great fun to shoot. You don't need a whole butterfly for that. In fact, you kind of have to waste a butterfly to get the wing to get it to where you can put it flat under the microscope. Lesson number five, know what you're going to do with your bugs when they arrive. Um, when you get your bugs is not the time to start thinking, oh, I'm going to, these are nice. I'm going to want to keep these for a while and, and have to go ordering stuff from Amazon or wherever. If you are ordering dry bugs, get some dry containers, sealable dry containers. The things that Alison Pollock uses for her slime molds would be great, the little match boxes. If you buy them wet, keep them wet. So you'll need bottles and alcohol sealable uh, containers. It gets a bit more difficult if you get one dry and then have to wet it to relax it and you end up with a wet dry specimen. Now, some of those are better off re-dried. Some of them are better off all the way wet and kept in alcohol. It, it depends on the insect. They're all a bit different. I try to, to re-dry things with papery wings. Um, I try to keep wet uh, the, the things that are very small and got thoroughly soaked through when I was uh, limbering them up. Uh, so have that stuff on hand. If you don't have it on hand, you'll be scrambling for it and it'll make you do the one thing you mustn't do and that is rush. Sometimes when you pin an insect, uh, like a big beetle like this, the pin doesn't want to come out. If you put a bit of glue on it to stop it from spinning, just plan on keeping it with the pin in and keep it dry. It's definitely better if you have a pin in to keep them dry. When it comes to the size of the order, I recommend always ordering in small orders, but the first order with a company it has to be small. You need to check the company out. If they can't fill a small order accurately and, and give you good bugs, you're not going to want to spend a lot of money with them. Some of these places, a lot of them actually have a minimum order, and for a lot of them it's about 50 bucks. That's a lot of money for a, a, a set of insects, but resist the temptation to get a big order just so you don't have to do it again. This is probably just me and it probably won't affect anybody else, but I tried to, to keep my orders small because when I got a big order, I tended to rush through it and rushing through the photography kind of spoils the experience and in some ways spoils the photographs. Uh, smaller orders, I could really savor every individual specimen in there and photograph it until I had it completely covered. And um, yeah, it definitely is my preferred way to work, uh, to, to really have the time to, to research the insect and look at it and, and get it planned out, pin it, well, clean it thoroughly, photograph it, and never feel like you're in a rush. Sometimes a big box of bugs will put you in a rush that, that I, I regretted, but that might just be me. Shall we talk about some of the companies? I made a list. I'm going to give you my top 10. I'm going to give you these in the order that I scored them, the ones that I got the best insects from, the ones that packaged them the best uh, were easiest to deal with, all of the things that I measured, they scored high on a lot of it 
in order to get to the top of the list. I'm going to write this list out for you in the uh, video description so that you can refer to it. But these are the ones that, uh, that I recommend, that I thought did a great job. Number one was the Insects World Shop. The, uh, the owner is a uh, Spaniard, uh, Carlos de Silva, who lives in Paris, and uh, his shop is in Paris, and I have been in every room of his shop, wandering around it with him and his fun. And uh, he is a character, and he has a vast selection of gorgeous insects, and he knows where every last one of them is. A, a great inventory, a good but getting better website, he doesn't have everything photographed, and it's a monumental task. We talked a lot about photography, unsurprisingly. His prices are fair. His shipping is above average, uh, double boxed everything. And uh, he, he's one of the vendors that uses fibrous cotton as part of the packing. And that's one thing I came to really hate. I don't like it. It gets all over the bugs and uh, it's very hard to get it off. His website is getting better as he photographs more of the insects, but that is, that's a, a deficit too. Ordering from Carlos was a pain in the butt, but it turns out it was a pain in the butt because he was on vacation and his system had uh, gone down or something and uh, PayPal didn't know who he was. He got it all fixed as soon as he got back and everything went through fine. Uh, so it was a, a pain, but uh, again, being charitable about it, it probably isn't going to happen again. He's a super nice guy and he will take good care of you. I recommend him highly. Number two on the list is Insect Trade EU. This is an outfit from the Czech Republic. They have a, a great selection, though... They tend to be out of a lot of things. You'll sometimes go pages where everything's out. But I discovered that a lot of vendors do this because they want you to be aware of what they usually have or what they carry in their inventory, whether they have it or not, so that you can know to ask for it or be on the lookout for it. It does make browsing a bit frustrating. You have to go through a lot of, uh, a lot of pages, but the pictures uh, will pop up fairly quickly, they load fairly quickly and you can see what you're getting. And this is the place that has uh, collections of bugs for a single price and they are really, really inexpensive. I ordered a whole bunch of these, what they call scientific lots. It's uh, usually a collection of anywhere from five to 25 beetles or weevils or whatever it is you're interested in. And they'll come either, you know, 25 of the same species or uh, there'll be a mixture of various species. And if you go with the mixture, you can end up getting uh, dozens of good and small insects for a fraction of the price it would cost to buy them individually. So, so I was ordering these uh, for five dollars or so a pack of seven or ten weevils and they're all different species. I've seen I've seen more weevils that I could not identify um, from all over the world. Fantastic, absolutely great deal. By the way, almost all of these companies put the information about the collection on the back of a card uh, that the, the, the insect is on. The insects are all packaged the same way. They're put on a card with some kind of absorbent material and they're covered in some kind of plastic and they're stapled around the edges. This is an industry standard. I got one packet from this company, uh, Insect Trade EU, that by the time I got them, the packet was infested with mold. And um, I, I thought for a minute about sending them back, but the whole packet only cost $4. And I wanted to photograph the mold, which was fascinating. So I did, and I kept the bugs and photographed the mold on them too. In fact, I learned a new way to use the Wii Macro to photograph mold on the surface of a bug. And you'll have to see the video because I'm not gonna tell you now. It's interesting though. The, probably the best prices in, uh, out of everybody that I looked at, the uh, Insect Trade EU. Uh, number three is a local outfit, uh, or a US outfit called Bic Bugs, B-I-C Bugs. And um, 
They are like the other domestic one, the butterfly company. They have a lot of stuff that is not just dead insects. They have framed insects and pinned insects and all kinds of uh, fancy add-ons uh, that, that just make the website a bit slower to load because I'm not looking at any of that stuff. Uh, but they do have a fair inventory of, of actual dead bugs. Uh, I got my bee from there, my Euglacini uh, um, uh, orchid bee, which is a stunner, and uh, several other nice insects from them. They do package them well. Their website's good. Uh, yeah, it's a good experience. They're a bit expensive. This Big Bugs outfit are a little bit snooty. So they're one of the companies that I, I didn't have a really positive experience with because of the bee in the bottle thing. But the rest of it was okay. They're expensive. You'll spend a bit more money, but you'll be safe. Uh, number four uh, was uh, all the way uh, down in Australia. Insect Designs. A good selection, good website, uh, very quick shipping despite the, the massive distance. The order was complete. Uh, the great uh, packaging, very friendly. Uh, they seem to be familiar with the needs of photographers, and that was that was uh, helpful to know. Uh, the bugs I got from them were great, but anyway, they've got a great selection, and uh, I enjoyed doing dealings with them. Their website's good too. Number five, the Butterfly Company is another North American outfit. They uh, they're very boutiquey looking. They they also have lots of gifty type stuff which is expensive and and uh, kind of gets in the way uh, you, you've got to sort through a lot of that stuff i think that when a bug supplier sells a lot of framed stuff and gifts and and keychains and things like that it's a bit of a red flag for me makes me wonder if they're serious or not but i know they're serious because they put out a fair amount of videos on on all kinds of uh, insect taxidermy things. So uh, they clearly are, are invested in it and take it seriously. Um, they also cater to collectors and they have some super expensive stuff like a $1,200 Morpho Cypress. Uh, they have an easy to uh, navigate website, good selection, and they're kind of expensive. Of all of the, of all of the companies that I work with, their packaging was the best. Um, they packaged everything that separately in boxes. So there were boxes in boxes. Now, from an environmental uh, point of view, that might not be the, the best way to do it. But when you just shelled out 80 bucks on an order of insects, it's nice to know they're arriving in good shape. And they don't use cotton, they use a kind of straw material that doesn't get on the bugs. Number six, uh, talking about expensive, uh, there's a German outfit called the, the Insect Collector. The Insect Collector and the fact that he is listed on this list is uh, an anomaly for this study. I did not place an order with this man uh, and I did not examine any of uh, his insects, but friends of mine did. Uh, I was uh, disappointed to find that the uh, payment system that he has set up for his store is just about impregnable for uh, uh, for North American customers, um, and unless I guess you you are ready to spend a lot of money, he only takes payment over bank wire transfers and uh, has a very high uh, minimum order uh, amount. So uh, when all things were considered, and given the fact that his prices were very high, uh, I decided not to to personally sample his wares. Uh, but uh, spoke to, to some of my colleagues uh, on the European continent and uh, got feedback from them. So based on that, uh, this, this seems like a very respectable, uh, reliable company that uh, caters mostly to collectors, but has some very, very fine specimens. There is a Canadian outfit at number seven, the uh, Insect Collectors Shop. Very good, um, fa fairly small. Uh, they really cater mostly to collectors, but they have lots of nice stuff to photograph. Good packaging, good friendly service, and uh, a decent selection. 
And number eight is a Belgian outfit called Exotic Insects. They sell Indonesian insects and everything they have is reasonably priced and gorgeous but they have a very, very narrow selection. I think on their, their Diptera page, the, the fly page, they had maybe 20 items total um, compared to some of the vendors that would have 20,000. So <laughs> they're, they're limited, but they're worth looking at because their website's lovely. It loads quickly. Ordering from them is definitely a, a, a hurdle to get over, but the insect selection is uh, interesting. Got some gorgeous stuff. Bugs Direct is at number nine. Uh, they, they cater to artists and creatives more than anything else. Um, they do have uh, stuff for collectors. They're, they're uh, a, a weird um, outfit, very fancy website. They sell a lot of gifty type stuff, uh, but they do have insects and um, they're expensive. Yeah, they have a shop in Thailand and a, a big web presence and a shop in the UK. I was a, a little bit underwhelmed by their uh, selection, to be honest. Uh, at number 10, another Parisian outfit. This is uh, ALD Entomology. Um, mostly just rare specimens, uh, but nothing endangered as far as I could find out. The prices uh, were really high because they were catering to people who collect rare insects. So I would buy insects from any of those 10 vendors. Uh, without really any concern at all. Uh, but I would favor those at the top of the list, especially in the top five, say. There's a, another uh, shop in Canada by the name of Thorns Insect Shop, and it's owned by a collector. And a lot of their stuff is really high-end, expensive stuff. Uh, I, um, I did not end up ordering from them uh, because I couldn't find what I wanted and um, they were expensive. So uh, the jury's still out. That might be one I will try later. There are several sellers on eBay. OS Insects is one of them. They're German, mostly they have auctions, but they have a good history of what, what their bugs sold for. And the prices seem fairly reasonable uh, for the final price, but they're all fairly rare and exotic insects. There are plenty of others, the smaller vendors, I would be much more reluctant to buy from. I, I think there is value to buying from a, a bigger company that has a bigger inventory, more selection. They're, they're used to shipping the stuff and uh, they probably have the best contacts. In this video, I've explained to you what I think is important, knowing the market, knowing your vendor, knowing what you want, knowing what you're gonna do with it. If you know all of these things, you'll probably stay out of trouble. Uh, and uh, if you shop domestically, you'll almost certainly stay out of trouble. Most of the worrying stuff when it comes to money happened with shipping policies overseas. And then I went over the top 10 vendors in my project and that number could grow or shrink or change completely as time goes on. I mean, I'm gonna continue to keep track of uh, how different companies do when I order stuff uh, again in the future. Uh, I'm a much more informed uh, customer now than I was before. So I hope that was useful. This has been the most positive and enjoyable experience I've had in my years of insect photography. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I have really been thrilled to get to know all of these cool new insects. I've seen stuff I never thought I'd see. Uh, and uh, I've talked to people I otherwise wouldn't have met. In closing, as I leave this project behind, I'm not leaving buying insects behind. I think I've discovered it to be a, a really important part of my, my own practice. Uh, and I really enjoy photographing new stuff that I'm unlikely to ever see over here. So I'm gonna continue to keep track of what's going on and I'm sure I'll be back to give you another report at some time in the future. I would remind you that the, the insect business is a, is a huge business and it is largely unregulated uh, anywhere in the world. So we really have to be responsible uh, shoppers and not put vendors in the situation where we're willing to buy illegal black market endangered goods. That ultimately is our responsibility, just like paying attention to the people that are involved in this 
trade as well. So it's a very fluid dynamic out there. So pay attention to it, read about it, learn about it, and uh, share what you find with other people. I think we'll all be grateful to know exactly who we're buying from and who it's impacting. So I want to thank Jan Nelson again uh, for funding this and, uh, and making it possible and supporting the work and being patient while it was done. And I also want to thank all of my new Patreon supporters. I know that uh, a lot of you have come on in, in recent months and may not have heard from me yet directly. I am remedying that now. I cannot believe that uh, somehow my Patreon uh, emails did not get picked up by my VIP list. And uh, several of you I know have, have joined a while ago and have not heard from me, and that's unacceptable. So thank you everybody, uh, especially uh, those of you who just joined in this last week who I have spoken to. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day, stay safe and be well. Thank you.